All right, so this is the second part of the lymphatic system chapter. In this uh, short video, we're gonna just talk about the primary and secondary lymphatic structures. Um, and so let's start with primary. So by definition, a primary lymphatic structure is gonna be where uh, B and T cells are made uh, and or mature, okay? And so we're gonna start off, we know that um, cells, at least initially, are made in the red bone marrow, all right? So that's our first primary lymphatic structure. Uh, so this should look very familiar by now. So we have our hemocytoblast or, or our hematopoietic stem cell. That is gonna branch into a myeloid stem cell, which can become all types of blood cells we talked about, red blood cells, platelets, and many of the white blood cell types we've talked about. Or it can become a lymphoid stem cell, and from there it will give us all of our lymphocyte types of white blood cells. So that would be our natural killer cells, our B cells that are gonna make antibodies, or our T cells, okay? And so this is a distinction I wanna make. So they're all initially made here, right, in that bone marrow. However, the T cells specifically were making pre-T cells in the red bone marrow. Those pre-immature T cells then go to the thymus where they're gonna mature into T cells, okay? So they have kind of a unique life cycle. They start in the bone marrow, but then they travel to the thymus so that they can fully mature. So now let's talk about the thymus and what goes on there. Oh, briefly, really quick. Let's just do an overview, um, just a reminder of the functions of these uh, cells, okay? So our B cells function in humoral immunity because we'll be covering uh, the immune system very soon. All right, so we're gonna learn all about this, but humoral immunity, and so that means that they're gonna be making antibodies. All right. And then T cells, once they're mature, are gonna function in cellular immunity. Okay, and so they are going to uh, attack any abnormal cell. All right, so they're gonna attack um, any abnormal type of cell. All right, and then our, um, so those are both specific, humoral and cellular, so they're looking for specific things to make antibodies against or specific types of abnormal cell. And then our NK cells here is our type of lymphocyte that is nonspecific. So they're just going to go out and take care of anything that doesn't look right, right? It doesn't look like it belongs. Okay, so now let's talk about the thymus gland, all right? So the thymus gland is going to be this gland, right, here, and it sits behind the sternum, uh, kind of inferior to the neck, and rests upon the top of the heart, all right? So this is the thymus gland. It's bilobed, so it kind of has these two big lobes here, right and left, bilobed. And then those lobes are divided into all of these little tiny lobules, okay? So that the lobes are divided into little tiny lobules, all right? And so the function of the thymus gland, this is where T cells go and mature, all right? And so they mature and they take on their final function, whatever their specific target is, that's what they're gonna be doing and figuring out here in this thymus gland, okay? And so an interesting kind of fact about the thymus gland is that they, it contains epithelial cells. So the reason it contains epithelial cells is so that the T cells can learn what self cells, that just means our native body cells, they can learn what that looks like. And so then they'll be better able to distinguish between a self cell and a foreign cell. Okay, so those epithelial cells in the thymus teach the T cells what you know our own cells look like versus something that doesn't belong. Okay, and so generally the thymus gland is most active in children. 
as they're building their immune system. And then uh, over time with age, it atrophies um, and works uh, slightly less, all right? And so it's important to remember this is where those T cells mature. Uh, the T cells do not actively encounter or fight antigens in the thymus gland. They mature and then they're going to move on to other tissues where they will, uh, some of these secondary lymphatic structures where they will encounter antigens. All right, so they're just maturing here. Okay, so now let's talk about... Um, our secondary lymphatic structures. All right, so secondary lymphatic structures are gonna be where lymphocytes are going to encounter the antigens. So they're mature and they um, have fully developed and here they're gonna be encountering antigens. All right, uh, so we're gonna have, you know, in our digestive tract, there's gonna be a lot in you know your lymph nodes are going to be secondary uh, there's lymph nodules your spleen is also a secondary lymphatic structure okay so our first one is the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue all right and so this is going to be um, tissue for example we'll learn with the digestive system there's going to be pyres patches all right, so this would be lymphoid uh, tissue in the uh, digestive tract, right, the small intestine. And so this will help to fight bacteria and stuff like that in the food that's being digested. So those, there's malt tissue, mucosa, that's you know one of the layers in the uh, lining of the di digestive tract. All right, uh, and then tonsils, would be like this, all right, would be this malt tissue. Uh, your appendix would contain a lot of this malt tissue, all right, so the appendix can be removed without, you know, too much of hazard, but it does have uh, some immune function as well. Okay, so in addition to this malt tissue, uh, there are lymphoid nodules, and so lymphoid nodules are just areolar tissue with aggregated kind of clustered lymphocytes within it okay and so they just kind of wait there and if some kind of pathogen comes by or they're signaled that there's a pathogen those lymphocytes can become activated and go and fight all right and then we have lymph nodes which is what we're looking at here so this is a picture of a lymph node Okay, and so there are lymph nodes scattered throughout. If we look back at the picture from the last video, all right, so this, what we're seeing here, each of these kind of enlarged spots, these are gonna be lymph nodes. So there are lymph nodes scattered everywhere. We know there's lymph nodes in the neck, right? Cervical lymph nodes. You have lymph nodes in your armpits, in your abdomens, uh, in your groin, that kind of thing. All right, so lots of lymph nodes everywhere. And they're kind of like a relay station for all of those lymph vessels. So that lymph is gonna pass through uh, many lymph nodes before it's put back into the blood. And so lymph nodes, their job is to filter that lymph and if there's any kind of pathogen in it, you'll get immune activation, all right? So filter the lymph and activate the immune system. Okay, and so the way it works to filter the lymph is you have afferent vessels uh, which are going to be taking lymph in. Okay, and so that would be these vessels here. And so lymph nodes have many afferent vessels. Okay, we'll say, actually, let's just say lymph in. And that there are many of them. Okay, and then the efferent vessels take lymph out, and there are very few, typically uh, maybe one or two going out of a lymph node, all right? So that would be here. Okay, so efferent going out. And so the reason it's important to have so many more uh, vessels entering the lymph node than leaving is that the flow of lymph 
all right, will slow down because it's kind of like a bottleneck, all right? So we have all this lymph entering, but it only has one space to leave, all right? And so it's gonna slow down. And so that slowing down of the lymph allows our lymphocytes to kind of do their check, right? So to screen that lymph for any possible pathogen. And so that's all these dots we see here. Those are all gonna be lymphocytes that are in there checking all that lymph that's moving through and making sure there's nothing um, that needs an immune response to take care of it. Okay, and so if there is something in the lymph that needs to be taken care of, um, we know that those lymph nodes will swell. That's called lymph adenopathy. And those lymph nodes swell because these cells, when they're activated and they come across an antigen, maybe on a pathogen, um, they will start to multiply, right, like crazy. They will multiply very quickly, and so they'll just fill up this lymph node and it'll start to swell from the sheer number of cells in it. All right, so lymph adenopathy is swollen lymph nodes. All right, and then our last secondary lymphatic structure is the spleen. And so the spleen has two really important functions. One, it filters the blood and two, it is in functions in their immune response, so allowing lymphocytes to come in contact with antigens, okay? And so there's two different types of tissue within the spleen. We have uh, red pulp, all right? And so on this picture, we can see the spleen here. It sits kind of um, behind the left side of the stomach uh, and so then the pancreas would kind of, the tail of the pancreas would sit there, uh, kind of touching the spleen like that, all right? Uh, and so the spleen has the red pulp, which is this kind of outer area here that's pinkish on this picture. The function of the red pulp, that's where the blood is filtered. And the spleen is going <clears> to <throat> remove old kind of dead red blood cells, and it's going to remove old platelets, okay? So the red pulp filters the blood. And then the white pulp is where that immune activation occurs. Okay, and so that's more internal, so that would be the white pulp there. Okay, and so this is where those lymphocytes are located, um, that if they encounter some sort of antigen in the blood, they can, you know, respond, uh, and you'll end up with a immune response. All right, and then also the spleen functions in babies. Uh, for hematopoiesis. All right, so hematopoiesis in babies. All right, because babies actively, they're growing so quickly, need to make a lot of red blood cells. So the spleen kind of serves that additional function of red blood cell production for uh, infants. All right, so that's our lymphatic system chapter. Nice and short and sweet. Uh, and so then I will talk to you guys for our next chapter.